President Trump's hard-hitting U.N. debut in his first speech before the United Nations General Assembly yesterday, the president pulled no punches when it came to Iran, Venezuela, and especially North Korea. The United States has great strength and patience. But if it is forced to defend itself or its allies, we will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself and for his regime. Joining us right now is the State Department spokesperson and a former Fox News anchor, Heather Nauer. Good to see you, Heather. Hi, Maria. Great First to see you. First time you're with us since you took the job, so congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, we want to get your take on how's it going. The president seems strong and clear in that message yesterday. Uh, he's officially, I guess, uniting the world community against Kim Jong-un. What's your take on, on what went into that speech? Well, uh, first, the president is plain spoken. And in America, that is something that's still regarded as a good thing. And certainly that's shaking up the folks in Turtle Bay, all those diplomats, who are not used to that style of speaking. But the president is communicating not only to the United States audience, but to a global audience. Diplomacy is the preferred option. And when I say that, that means we still have a lot of tools in our toolkit that we can deal with North Korea. A lot of people like to focus on the military option, but at the State Department where I work, we're pushing forward with the diplomacy. And from a business point of view, we're really focusing on removing the money that goes into North Korea, that goes into Kim Jong-un's regime, into the nuclear and ballistic missile programs that are illegal, by the way, and trying to solve the problem of getting money out of that nation. He doesn't share it with his people. It goes into those How programs. How do you remove the money? Yeah, so part of the way we do it is through uh, limiting the number of guest workers in other countries. Secretary Tillerson, when he sits in these bilateral meetings with all of these nations, you name it, Algeria, African nations, European nations, South American nations, he will say, limit the number of North Korean guest workers in your country. What these people do, they'll go to these nations and they'll do construction jobs. But does the money go into their own pockets? The answer is without a doubt no. It is confiscated, the vast majority of it, by North Korea. It's and that's how labor. they fund it. Really that's is. Slave yeah. It yeah. truly is. And it goes into the pockets, and that's how they fund their uh, very expensive uh, military programs. Heather, can you also talk about um, the, what you're trying to do uh, on the education front, too? Because we've seen they're actually getting student visas and they're going over to China and they're learning the capabilities to build nuclear weapons. Yeah, I don't have anything on that because oh, yeah. that would be more of an, an intelligence matter right. uh, that we're not handling. At the State Department, so DOD would have to answer to that, or, so, or somebody else would as well. But uh, in terms of what we call the peaceful pressure campaign, we're still pushing ahead with that, and we're seeing a lot of success. You will see small headlines, not getting a lot of news, about uh, different nations kicking out an ambassador, cutting down the number of guest workers. And you see it every single day from Spain to Mexico, mm -hmm. you name it, Kuwait. All of these countries are coming together to do this because they recognize this is not the United States' problem with North Korea. It's the world's problem yeah. with North one, Korea, and that's our top issue. One thing that people don't focus on is Secretary Tillerson's background, yeah. and he can see the world of oil and commodity flows like nobody else on planet Earth. Absolutely. And oil is... is a critical tool in putting pressure on all of these rogue regimes, mm -hmm. whether it's North Korea and maybe potentially fully cutting off the flow of oil into North Korea, or Venezuela, lifeblood, yeah. Russia, Iran. These are critical sources. And now he comes at it from a different position right. because as running ExxonMobil, he was the guy who had to do a deal with some of these hostile dictators Correct. who w may or may not have given Exxon access. He has good relationships with yeah. a lot of these people. Of course, I want to say he's recused himself from anything related right. to ExxonMobil, so I just want to yeah, make that course. clear. But he gets it. And when you work in that kind of job, in that kind of industry, you're used to thinking of things not two years out. You're used to working, looking at things 30 years out. And so that's the perspective that he takes when he comes to dealing with world problems, whether it's North Korea, whether it's Iran, whether it's Russia. Well, what a, what a what a list of problems that the president right now is faced with. Uh, you talk about Iran, you talk about North Korea, then there's the Qatari situation. Mm -hmm. The president also slammed the Obama era Iran nuclear deal in the speech yesterday, once again calling it an embarrassment. Your boss, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, also expects concern about the agreement. Here's what he told Brett Baer last night. It's not a stiff enough agreement. It doesn't slow their program enough, and holding them accountable is difficult under the agreement. But most importantly, the agreement comes to an end, and so we can almost start the countdown clock as to when they will resume their nuclear weapons capability. 
So now he's facing a deadline, the president yeah. is, in terms of rectifying this Iran deal. Yeah. Is he going to change this deal? Is he going to rectify Well, it? Our, our whole Iran policy is still under review right now. So I'm not going to get ahead of what that will contain, but we're having a lot of discussions about it. And here's why. When that, what's called JCPOA, was put into effect, that only dealt with the nuclear portion of Iran's activities. But we all know here, from having worked in the noobs business, all of the bad stuff that Iran does, from uh, funding and arming Hezbollah to harassing our U.S. Navy sailors in the Persian Gulf and elsewhere. Ask the families of the 1983 Beirut bombings. Who was responsible for that? That leads directly back to Iran. So this nuclear deal failed to look at the totality of all the bad actions uh, that Iran is responsible for. And so we think a broader approach, a broader look at Iran is necessary. Uh, as we look forward to trying to have world security. And Secretary well, Tillerson is meeting his Iranian counterpart today, yes. Yeah. We're looking forward to um, we're looking forward to having what some you, meetings on all of What do you want to get that. out of those meetings? Look, uh, I think one of the things we want to do is talk to our European allies. They have some concerns about how we view this JCPOA and the nuclear deal. One of the things we're looking to do is talking to them about, hey, let's acknowledge the broader problem of Iran and not just focus on the nuclear deal. Uh, those European allies seem to be far more concerned with Sunni terrorism in, um, in Europe. We think uh, the Shia terrorism coming out of Iran is significant as well, and we want to address that. All right. We will leave it there. Heather, okay. it's good to see you. Great to see you. And Thanks. You've got a lot on your plate. We'll be watching. We certainly <laughs> do. Good luck with Thank that. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. Best to all of you. Heather Nauert there.